few seconds, I just want you to appreciate the name of the Lord. Let's thank God for his mercy, for his goodness. You've got time and seasons in your hands. You called for love out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God.
sanctuary and not in his mortuary. Praise the Lord! Talk to your neighbor. Tell him all power, all glory and honor belongs to who? God! Hallelujah! All power all glory, all honor, belongs to God. All power, all, power. all glory, all, glory. All, honor. all honor, belongs to God. All power. Touched all over, cause I need to be right. Do 
Mountains tremble at the mention of your name. Mountains crumble at the sound of your voice. Our battles won by the power of your holy end. We have won cause we have won the way to be here.
from thy hated That is why your name, O Lord, is forever. You've been faithful, God. You've been faithful, God. From the ages past. thank you. Thank you for bringing us to your presence once again. We return all glory to you. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that your mercy speak for us in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come and give us understanding of your word in Jesus' name. And let all glory be yours, Lord, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Before we have our seats, let's take the last stanza of the Sunday school hymn. Amen. Let's say this word of prayer, Father. Deliver me from the power of the enemy. Father, please deliver me from the power of the enemy. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let's have our seats. We are all welcome to today's Sunday school. We are all welcome to today's Sunday school. Last week we looked at, we looked at, the, we looked at dating the Christian perspective. And the teacher who spoke to us, talked to us about how we are to do these things correctly. This Sunday we'll be looking at courtism is evil. Our topic for this morning is cultism is evil. And our Bible text to be taken from Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 10 to 19. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 10 to 19. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 10 to 19. Proverbs 1, 10 to 19. It says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lock privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil, casting thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For, they, they, for their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lock privily for their own souls. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which take away the life of the owners thereof. Our memory verse this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 59, verse 7. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 7. And we'll be taking it together. Isaiah 59, verse 7. One, two, go. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are the thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Our lesson introduction. Courtism is evil. Courtism can be traced to the ancient Egyptians. The Egyptians had many magicians who practiced occultism and used occult means to acquire more powers. These magicians belonged to groups that kept their activities secret. We see an example in Exodus chapter 7, verse 11 where um, um, the magicians of Egypt turned their rods into serpents. Um, the spread and explosion of courtism to other nations of the world happened for diverse reasons. Courtism is otherwise known as secret court or secret society. 
um, it is important that we know that occultism is the mother of cultism. Occultism is the mother of cultism. So cultism stemmed out of occultism. A very good example, how many of us watched Abattoir? How many of us watched Abattoir? All right, we see Rambo going to the Grandmaster to obtain more powers. So a court member going to an occult member to obtain more powers. Okay, let's look, look at our lesson outlines, our lesson outlines, our lesson outlines. And we have two lesson outlines. Lesson outline one says description and consequences. Lesson outline two says activities and precautions. Activities and precautions. All right, the description of courtism. The description of courtism. A court is a group of people who have extreme beliefs and ideas which only members have access to. A court is a group of people who have extreme beliefs and ideas which only members have access to. Number two says, courtism in, is an association or organization of people whose membership, initiation, policies, and activities are done secretly. Courtism in, is an association or organization of people whose membership, initiation, policies, and activities are done secretly. So courtism is a group of people who have extreme beliefs and ideas, who also have extreme initiation processes. For example, there, there's a court group called the Kegites, and their initiation process is that they are, they are potential members, those that want to join them, must have slept with several number of ladies at a time, at a time. That is their own extreme belief and initiation process into um, their court group. There are also other courts that do extreme things. For example, some take blood as their initiation process. Some have to cut themselves. Some have to kill others. You know, extreme things before the members can join. And these activities are done secretly because these activities can only tra trend in darkness. Then number three says, the activities are carried out at odd hours of the day and are at variance with the acceptable norms of the society. Because of the nature of their activities, they can only function in darkness. That is why Matthew chapter 13 verse 25 says that when men slept, the enemy came and so te um, tears among his wit. So these things that these guys do can only be done in darkness. They use darkness as, as a, 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 an avenue to perform their um, activities, to do things. So if there's anyone who likes doing things in darkness, it is not good. It is not good. As children of light, we are light. We are supposed to do things in the light. Anything done in darkness is evil. All right. Courtism cuts across all spectra of society. However, the youths are the most vulnerable. Court groups usually um, uh, um, influence or tend more to the younger generation. The younger generation. They are the ones that are actively involved in court groups. The older generations are involved in occultism. The older generations are involved in occultism. But the younger generations are involved in court groups. Then number five says, occultic groups use signs and symbols such as green ribbons on berets, crossbones, human skull, axes, and so on. They also ad ad adopt some hand grip as means of mutual recognition among members. Also from the movie Abattoir, remember how the registrar grabbed Martin's hand when he wanted to greet him. So they have special ways that they recognize each other. They have special symbols that they use. Sometimes it's tattoo on their body. So for those that like using tattoos, these things are not good. They are not good. They, they represent um, those whose activities are found in the regions of darkness. And we should not be found doing these things. We should not be found doing these things. Consequences of courtism. Consequences of courtism. Although the benefits promised members of secret courts may be enticing, the reality is that courtism is suicidal. Anyone who is a courtist is always living under fear. Under fear. So many times they sleep with their guns under their pillows. They sleep with their uh, um, cutlass or axe beside them because they don't know when death will come. So um, those that have signified themselves or joined court groups are people who are very vulnerable to death, strange and violent deaths. So it is very suicidal. It is very suicidal. It is important to know that all power belongs to Jesus. So those power that you are seeking in those regions of darkness, you can receive it from Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18, all power has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Number two says it leads to fear, insecurity, failure, shedding of innocent blood, destruction of lives, destinies, and properties. It leads to all these things. Number three says when caught, it gives bad names to family. 
court groups, members of court organizations, they bring shame to their family when they are caught. Number four says, courtists are unforgiving and revengeful. revengeful. Courtists are unforgiving and revengeful. Um, Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 10, Jeremiah was saying there that these guys are people who would never forgive. They are always laying wait for um, um, revenge, for revenge. So are you someone that likes waiting for revenge? You believe in the saying that revenge is best served cold. It is a wicked act. It is an act of wickedness. And these things are things that court guys practice. So if you are found practicing them, you can be tending towards that area. It is important to note that we should forgive. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Let's learn to forgive. Let's learn to, to let go. Let offenses go. Um, Peter was asking Jesus, how many times does my brother have to offend me that I have to forgive? Jesus said, 70 times, 7 times in a day. And it is not even possible. And even if it is possible, you should still forgive. You should still forgive. Cultists attract God's punishment, causes spiritual death and loss of eternal life among others. Courtism attracts God's punishment, causes spiritual death and loss of eternal life among others. Then C, a child of God must not allow anything or anyone to lure him or her into joining a court groom. Psalms 1 verse 1. Psalms 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the Lord. He starts by saying, blessed is the man who has not walked in the counsel of the ungodly. His friends are not ungodly people. His friends are not ungodly people. Um, um, Apostle Paul was saying, evil cor communication corrupts good manners. Whosoever you walk with, you tend to, you become more like them. So as children of God, as children of light, we should associate ourselves with people who would ensure that we grow spiritually, not people who will draw us back into darkness and evil. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Just like fornication and all uncleanliness and covetousness, courtism should not be named at all among believers. We move to lesson outline two. Lesson outline two. Activities and precautions. Activities and precautions. The scripture warns us against fellowshipping with them because their activities have negative effect on both members and non-members. The activities of these cults take various destructive forms, which include consumption, consumption of alcohol and hard drugs that tend to give false courage. Number two says stealing, violent behaviors, killing, using of guns, dangerous weapons, torture, sexual arousement, stripping to the pants, flogging, and all these things. These are activities that allow, that opens up the channels of, of human spirits to the ministration of demons. And these things are things that should not be named among believers. Also, number three, making destructive cult marks on the body of new members with red hot swords during initiation. These destructive activities are also done. Sometimes they have to mutilate a part of their body, probably their thumb, or they have to remove their fingers. You know, weird things, weird things, weird and very weird things. To avoid being lured into cultism, a Christian must take the follow precaution. Okay, sorry. Regardless of this, of, of the motives for setting up or joining a court group, it is shameful to imagine the evil they penetrate and the destruction they cause to themselves and their victims. Um, John chapter 8 verse 44, Jesus was saying that ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father that shall you also do. He was a murderer from the beginning and did not abide in the light. That word translated of, he said ye are of, that word of is the word ek, ek in Greek and it means origin, origin. So these people, they have, they have done things, they have grown the seed of evil in them so much so that their origin is now taken out of the devil is now from the devil so whatsoever they see him do that is what they do whatsoever they see him say that is what they say and these things should not be named among believers Romans chapter 6 verse 16 Romans 6 16 we see the spiritual law of servitude we see the spiritual law of servitude whosoever we yield ourselves as members to obey we become servants to those people whether to those spirits whether unto God as righteousness or unto the devil as sin and all those things so we should be careful careful and ensure that we do not partake in these things that will draw us into darkness to avoid being lured, lured into cultism a Christian must take the following precautions 
a Christian must take the following precautions. Number one says, stand firm on your faith and do not allow situations or circumstances to dictate your position in Christ. This can lead one to bondage. Apostle Jude was saying in Jude chapter 1 verse 3 that it was needful for him to write of the common salvation. And he was telling the, the church to earnestly contend for their faith earnestly earnestly it is a contention it is continuous apostle paul said something similar he said you should resist the devil by putting on our own armor and he said having done all to stand having done all to stand second corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 it says casting down imaginations and every eye thing that had exalted itself against the knowledge of god and bringing every thought in obedience to Christ, in captivity to the obedience of Christ. So it is something that we should do consciously, consciously. We should hold our position in Christ. We should stand firm on our faith, stand firm. Um, Apostle Paul admonish, admonished us in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2. Romans 12, 1 to 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your re reasonable service. Then verse 2, he said something very important. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word translated transform there is the, is the Greek word metamorphor, metamorphor, the same word that metamorphosis is taken out from. So that transformation becomes permanent. So when a, a lava becomes a butterfly, it can never go back to a, a lava. It can never. When all these um, animals, when they metamorphose, they can never go back to their previous state. And that is what Apostle Paul is admonishing us to do, to stand strong and constantly renew our minds so that we can never be lured back into darkness. May the Holy Spirit help us in Jesus' name. Number two says, disassociate yourself from friends, class, course, roommates, family members, etc., whose ways of life are suspicious. Let them know your stand in the Lord. My son, Proverbs 1.10, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not, they will always entice thee you they will always want to lure you they will always say why don't you try this why don't you smoke this stick why don't you take this little drug why don't you inhale this cocaine why don't you do this but you must say no 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 constantly always always resisting the devil always always may the lord help us in jesus name number three says let your fellowship with god and the brethren be strong Spare, spend your spare time with godly people. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but looking forward to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number four says, avoid misinterpretation of your person. Let people see you as genuine children of God, as a genuine child of God in your mode of dressing, use of language, slangs, gestures. All these things are things that are done in the region of darkness. And we should be careful as believers not to do such things. There are some dresses you are not supposed to put on. Because when you do so, you are simply showing, you are simply identifying yourself as a child of the devil. And, jo and Jesus told us in John chapter 8, verse 44, that ye have your father, the devil, and is lost is what you will do. So do not identify with the devil in your mode of dressing, in your use of languages, in the places you attend, in the friends you keep. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. C says, if you're already a courtist, you must be ready to cut ties with the group and believe that Jesus can save you. It is important to seek counsel from a matured Christian. If you must confess your sins, renounce your membership, and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10. Verse 10 says that with the heart we believe and with the mouth we make confession unto salvation. So if it is possible or if it be that you have associated yourself with any court organization or group, um, consciously, consciously renounce it. Renounce it publicly. Let these people know that you are no longer part of them. Stand strong in your liberty in Christ. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 17 to 18. Um, God was saying, using Apostle Paul, he said, come out from among them and be ye separate, and I will receive you. What is, is the fellowship of light with darkness? What concord at, at Christ with Belia? And all those things. Let us consciously show that we are the children of God. Let us consciously demonstrate to others. Let them see us. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 said, you are the light of the world. Then verse 16, 16 he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see it. So if your light is shining and men are not seeing it, 
then it is not enough. You have to shine it to that extent that men see it. What is said of you when you step into a place? Do people look at you and say, oh, this guy looks like a cultist because you are not shining your light? How are you carrying yourself? How are you carrying yourself? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. In summary, cultism is evil. Cultism is evil and has grave consequences. Youths should be aware of the activities of cultists and take necessary precautions in order not to be a victim. In conclusion, shun cultism. It only leads to destruction of lives and destinies. It only leads to destruction of lives and destiny. In, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, Apostle Paul said something very important. He said, neither give place to the devil. So when anyone um, does these things, associates himself with court organizations, he's simply giving place to the devil. And the devil will always want to stand as a legal guy and ensure that these guys never become free from them. So constantly, we are to actively resist him. We are to actively show that we are children of the light. Can we be on our feet? Can we be on our feet as we take take the closing prayer can we be on our feet as we take the closing prayer our prayer is father guide me against every appearance and activities of courtism help me to flee from every appearance of evil in the name of jesus father please help me to free from every appearance of evil in the name of jesus any friend that will lure me into courtism father please help me help me give me the strength to resist to say no In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's jam hands for Jesus. For the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. It's time to pray. Let's begin to appreciate God for another opportunity to be alive. Hallelujah, Lord, we praise your name. For you are worthy of our praise. The Lamb of God, you never change. Yahweh, you reign the name of the Lord. Thank him for another opportunity to be alive. Father, we worship your name. Father, we magnify your holy name. Father, we exalt your holy name. Father, we worship you, Jesus. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for vitality. We thank you for provision. We thank you for protection. We love you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Blessed be thy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Acts chapter 4, verse 23. Acts chapter 4, verse 23. This was the account of Peter and John after they healed the man at the beautiful gate. They were being persecuted and locked up. We're going to be praying for the church and especially the church in northern Nigeria. We're going to be praying specifically, not just only um, northern Nigeria, but the land of Sokoto, that the Lord will arise. In this, in this account in Acts chapter 4, verse 23, after they were released in, in verse 24, when they heard this, they raised their voices together and prayed to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of David. Why do the nations rage? And the people plot vain things. The kings and the heads rise up, and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed. Then if you read the Psalms 2 version, the Bible says, 
He that sits in heaven shall do what shall laugh. And he will rebuke them in his fury. Let's lift up our voices and say, Father, on behalf of Sokoto, let every siege be rebuked in the name of Jesus. We ask and we rebuke every siege against your church in Sokoto and northern Nigeria in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voices. The church can, may not be able to gather like this in the north. But we have the privilege and we have the uh, duty to intercede for them as they did in the church. Peter and John here were locked up. In other various accounts, Peter was locked up. It was on the account of the church co collectively praying that the Lord intervened. The Lord in this season needs intercessors that will call upon his name to bring deliverances to people in terror areas. Father, we pray that in the land of Sokoda in the north and northern Nigeria, we rebuke every terror, we rebuke every aggression against the church in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every terror in the name of Jesus. Every persecution we rebuke against your church in the name of Jesus. We stop the hands of the evil one in the name of Jesus. They have lifted up their hands. That the Bible says, why do the 18th range? That they are raging. They are raging against your church. Father, we stop them in the name of Jesus. We rebuke their activities in the name of Jesus. We stop them in the name of Jesus. We rebuke their activities in the name of Jesus. We stop them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. In verse 29, it said, Now the Lord considered their threat. They were still praying. They said, Now, Lord, consider their threat and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. The church in the north now will be under great fear and terror. So we'll pray, Father, consider their threats against your church in the north. And in return, let your servant, let your children in the north be receive boldness in the name of Jesus in the face of fear. Receive boldness. The Bible says the righteous shall be as bold as the lion. In the face of terror, in the face of fear, let the church in the north, in the land of Sokoto, receive boldness. In the name of Jesus, receive boldness. In the name of Jesus, our God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let him roar against every aggression, against every persecution, against every mouth and every hand that has risen against the church in the north. In the name of Jesus, we pray for our brothers and sisters in the north that they will receive boldness. In the name of Jesus, against every ag aggression, against every terror, they will receive boldness. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray for boldness, we pray for strength, we pray for might. In the name of Jesus, this is the time, the spirit of might. Father, let it blow through the land of Sokoto and the north. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Verse 30 says, stretch out, they were still praying, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of, our holy, of, the holy, of your holy servant, Jesus. The response to persecution is what was stated there, signs and wonders. There's the, the God we serve is not a God that only speaks. It's a God that shows signs and wonders. Paul says, I've not come to you with the enticing words of men's wisdom, but with the demonstration of the spirit and of power. So we say, Father, in northern Nigeria and the land of Sokoto, stretch forth your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders that will shut the mouth of the enemy, that will shut the mouth of the evil ones, that will shut the mouth undeniable tangible signs and wonders that will steal every aggression of the enemy, that will prove that Jesus is Lord. Stretch your hand in signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Let the wind of signs and wonders blow through the northern Nigeria in the name of Jesus. When the prophets were persecuted in the time of Ahab, Elijah rose and he called them fire and the nation says the the Lord is God. Father, let your wind of signs and wonders blow through northern Nigeria. In the name of Jesus, let everyone see your power. Let them be silenced. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Verse 31. And after they prayed, the Bible said the place where, where they were meeting was shaken. 
and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. They prayed for boldness, they prayed for courage, and the Holy Ghost came to execute it. So we say, Father, all over northern Nigeria, where your church is, where our brethren, fellow believers in Christ are, Father, shaking those places in the name of Jesus. Let there be release of the Holy Ghost like never before. In the name of Jesus, let things beyond the ordinary begin to happen. Shake those places in the name of Jesus. Just as the, the Holy Ghost came on, on the day of Pentecost, Father, and there was tremendous outpouring of the Holy Ghost, and there was, there was power. People were, souls were saved. Let this, O oh Lord, turn around for the move of the Holy Ghost, for a revival move, for a presence that changes the situations in the name of Jesus in the north. Father, let there be shaking. Let there be shaking. Let there be shaking. Let there be shaking by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Manda Korea da Banabada Yabada. Ask the Lord that he will fill you also with his spirit in the name of Jesus. And every threat and every agenda of the devil against your life will fall out in the name of Jesus. Every plot of the enemy against your life will fall out in the name of Jesus. Begin to magnify the name of the Lord. The Bible says that be not drunk in wine where it says, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Say, Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit, O Lord. Let me be emboldened against every terror of the enemy against my life. Against every, the Bible says our weapon of our warfare are not carnal, they are but they are spiritual mighty true God to pulling down strong goals. Let the spirit of, of God fill me and every warfare, every setup of the enemy over my life fall out and fill out in the name of Jesus. To God alone be all the glory. Begin to magnify the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Let's sing that song as we please. Lord, we pray your name. morning welcome to church it's time for him and offering um, can we remain on our feet as we take our hymn hymn 35 deeper deeper in the love of Jesus Titus please let's move forward and stay in the front row God bless you
Just before we pray, can you just give an offering of smile to God? Some of us didn't have money to give. Uh, I believe all of us can give a smile. Manufacture ATV stuff. Think of something that is making you happy and just smile at God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't say sit down. I said smile at God. Smile. Offering of smile. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful. Thank you, Lord, for that offering of smile. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you receive it as a seed and multiply back harvests of great smiles for us this week in the name of Jesus. Let sorrow, pain, and agony be far away from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill our mouths with laughter and our hearts with joy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you again for the opportunity to give unto you that we love you. Accept our tokens in the mighty name of Jesus. Make each of us ever willing, more willing to give unto you and say thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. And that if as many as desire to give but do not have, please provide for them in the name of Jesus. We are, you have given us bountifully. We will give back to you bountifully in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray in particular for your children with a fresh edition of tithe. Whether the offering or tithe is being given by transfer or directly in cash, God of heaven, please receive from us and multiply blessings to every giver in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are obedient in tithe, the grace to have testimonies receive afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. None of your seed will constitute a waste in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not live a life that is so sinful that God will reject you and your offering in the mighty name of Jesus. By his mercy at work in your life, you will not only give your substance, but you will give yourself to him in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, as you make the tithes of this morning for your children and those who have sent it along the line very special and unique and cause blessings to overflow to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let none of us walk in poverty in the name of Jesus. Let's walk in abundance and have to give out in the name of Jesus. Blessed be thy name for answer to prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Ministers in the house, the other basket, that the plain basket. All the glory must be unto the Lord in the highest.
glory be to God. Glory be to God in the highest. It can be better. I say glory be to God in the highest. Amen. We are having special ministrations in songs this morning before the the mother of them all. Okay. I think that's the idea. The Ogagwatagwata of them all, like that man we say. That's the live voices. So the live voices we come to take the rear as the standing choir. But because we have some of our friends who have prepared so much for the weekend program we are supposed to have, which we had to seat because of the sports, the interlevel games, we want to see appreciate the effort of each level in preparing for today that yesterday's program. And so in this order, we will have the presentations, 100 level, I believe, right? OK. So 100 level, they are starting. If you are in 100 level in the house, can you shout hallelujah? <laughs> hallelujah. So after them, we will have 300 level choir. 300 level in the house, shout hallelujah. All right. And uh, after them, we will have 500 level uh, choir. So please let me quickly say that if for any of the levels that place will not take you, you can come here. All right? So there is no problem. And then after that, the live voices will come. So can we celebrate Jesus in the life of 100 level?
in the name of the Israel of God, will onward press, overcoming sin and all unrighteousness. Not to us, but unto him the praise shall be for salvation and for blood, but victory. For us now we through the blood of Jesus we Praise God. Can someone say, I need a move? Say, I need a move. Still be removed. Strongholds are still being lost. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. That wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. 
and I am to still be a slave. God, we believe, yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. We need to move. Lord, we need to move. Lord, we need to move. Lord, we need to move. And bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. We are here. Oh, you. 
appreciate God in the life of all our choir as they move. The Almighty God will bless our choir in the mighty name of Jesus. As they sing here on earth, they will all sing in heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's worship the Almighty God. As they go, we bless you, O God of heaven. We bless you, O God of heaven. Exalted in the name of Jesus. All that you have done for us, we say thank you. For loving us, we say thank you. For saving us, we say thank you. For justifying us, we say thank you. For sanctifying us, we say thank you. For granting us the spirit of adoption, we say thank you. Thank you for all the privileges that we enjoy as your children. Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. This morning, Daddy, we pray that you will speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the glory will be yours at the end in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. God bless you, let's have a seat. Today's message is titled, There is a purpose for your life. There is a purpose for your life. And our test is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1. You can read from verse 3 to 10. Jeremiah, chapter 1, from verse 3 to 10. But because of time, I will just read verse 5. And it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. There is a purpose for everything created by God, including you and I. In other words, we are not here by accident. For Jeremiah, God said in Jeremiah 1 5 that we have read that. I have created you to be a prophet to nations of the world. If you go to 1 John 3, 8, the Bible tells us why Jesus Christ manifested. And it says, Jesus manifested 
so as to destroy the works of the devil. I pray for somebody here this morning. Every work of the devil in your life, the almighty God will destroy in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible makes it clear to us in Hebrews 2, 14 to 15. Hebrews 2, 14 to 15. That Jesus died so that he might destroy the one that had the power of what? Of death. That's the purpose of which Jesus Christ died. So that he can destroy the one that had the power over death. That's the devil. So please know it that there is a purpose for your life. There is a purpose for which God has brought you to this university. It is not by accident. You could as well have been to other public university or any other private university, but for, because God has a purpose for your life, he said you must pass through this university. And I pray for you that you will not miss that purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. If God has a purpose for your life, then... It behoves on you to discover the purpose of God for your life. You must discover the purpose of God for your life. If you are going to live a fulfilled life, you must discover the purpose of God for your life. And why do I say so? Because failure to discover the purpose of God for your life, we do what? We lead to abuse. It will lead to abuse. And let's see a few examples. In the case of Esau, Esau failed to discover why God allowed him to be the firstborn of the house. And what happens? He traded off his inheritance for a pottage. The Bible makes it clear to us that as a firstborn of the family, he is entitled to a double portion of the father's inheritance. But there was a day he was hungry. And he came back to the house from firm. And he saw his brother cooking. And he said, what is the importance of bad to me? You better take it. And he sold his bad child for the pottage. And the Bible tells us in Genesis 27, verse 34. The Bible says, a time came when he sold for it with tear. But it was too late. I pray for you that it will not be too late for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The same thing happened to King Saul. The almighty God made King Saul the first king in the land of Israel. He was placed in a place of honor. But because of disobedience, he abused that position. He disobeyed God. And what happens? The almighty God rejected him. The almighty God set him aside. And the almighty God turned him into an instrument of dishonor. Why? Because he abused the purpose of God for his life. The same thing happens to Samson in the book of Judges, chapter 16. It's a story we all know. The Almighty God anointed Samson from the mother's womb for the purpose of rescuing the children of Israel from enemies. And what happens? He abused that purpose of God for his life because of his love for opposite sex. And the Bible makes it clear to us that at the end, his two eyes were removed and he died with what? With the enemy. I pray that none of us will die with our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. So number one, God has a purpose for your life. 
It is for you to discover the purpose of God for your life. And if that purpose is not discovered, abuse is inevitable. You are likely to abuse. That's why you see some young ladies, they'll be very, very beautiful. And because they are very beautiful, what next do you do? You destroy their bodies. You never know why God has created them beautiful or a young boy handsome. They abuse that beauty, that handsomeness in their life. And before you know it, their life will never remain the same. My brothers and my sisters, it is only God can, that can reveal his purpose for your life. It is only God that can reveal his purpose for your life. And he can do so by sending his servants to tell you, just as in the case of Saul, through Eli. It was Eli that told Saul, you are the king, the first king in the land of Israel. That's 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. God can reveal his purpose concerning your life even through his son. He can reveal through an angel as in the case of Samson. It was an angel that told the mother and the father of Samson that he would deliver a boy, Samson, that will be the deliverer of the Israelites from their enemy. And the almighty God himself can reveal his purpose directly to you by speaking to you, as was the case of uh, Paul. Paul was going to Damascus and he had an encounter with God, and God told him exactly what he wanted him to be. My brothers and my sisters, you must discover the purpose of God for your life. Even though purposes might differ, but they have common elements. I will mention two of them. Number one, the purposes of God for your life are good ones. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I know the thought that I have towards you. They are thought of good and not of what? Of evil. To take you to what? To an expected end. That's number one. Every purpose of God is good. Note that one. Number two. The purpose of God must give glory to God. Every purpose of God must give glory to him. What is the implication of that? Brethren, if you are doing anything that is not giving glory to God, that's not the purpose of God for your life. Anything that you are doing that is not glorifying God, that is not the purpose of God for your life. Note that one. Any purpose of God must glorify God. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 is there. Ephesians 1, you can read from verse 10 to 12. Every purpose of God, whatsoever that you are doing in your closet, whatsoever that you are doing anywhere, if it is the purpose of God, must glorify God. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, in an attempt to achieve the purpose of God for your life, purpose killers will come. Note that one. Dream killers will come. But there is one fact, that as long as you are on the side of God, I can assure you 100% that nobody can frustrate the purpose of God in your life. Absolutely impossible. Note that one. Why? Because the Bible makes it clear to me. In the book of Isaiah chapter 14, if you read verses 24 and 20, uh, 27, he said, whatever God says, we surely do what? We come to pass. He's the Lord of hosts. Whatever he decrees, will surely be what? Be established. It will surely be established. And the Bible makes it clear to us in Proverbs 19.21. It says there are many devices in a man's heart. But it said, nevertheless, 
Please put it. Let's say it together. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall do what? Shall stand. I'm praying for somebody here. Every evil counsel of the enemy concerning you, the Almighty God, we frustrate in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31, it says, If God be for us, he said, Who can be what? Who can be against us? The classical example was the case of Joseph. We all know the story of Joseph. The Almighty God revealed the purpose for Joseph at the very young age. And he told the father and the brothers. And they decided to team up the brothers to frustrate the purpose of God in his life. But every attempt was taking Joseph closer and closer to his place of what? To the place of destiny. I pray for somebody here. Every attempt of the enemy to frustrate the purpose of God for your life, the almighty God will hijack and use it to take you to your place of destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, let me tell us this morning that no matter what the enemy might be doing, in terms of the area of frustrating the plan of God, as long as you are on the side of God, they will always fail. Irrespective of what is happening in your life now, it doesn't matter what you are facing right now, as long as you belong to Jesus, he will work out his own purpose for your life. Please note that one. He will work out his own purpose for your life life. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8.28, it says everything work together for what? For good. For those that are what? Love Christ and are called according to his what? To his purpose. And what is the meaning of that? My brothers and my sisters is just telling you that the only one that can frustrate the purpose of God for his or her life is you. No. Devil can never, can never, please underline it, frustrate the plan of God for your life as long as you are on the side of God. So the only one that can frustrate the plan of God for your life is what? Is you or I. We've seen an example. The case of Saul. He was the one that frustrated the plan of God for his life. That's why the dynasty of Saul was not established in the land of Israel. Why? Because of disobedience. In the case of Eli, he was the one that frustrated the plan of God for his life because he was to be priest throughout generation. But a day came when he honored his children more than God. And God said, I am changing my mind. That's only what I told you. My purpose for your life. And the Almighty God from now on, no belt in your family will ever live long. They will die young. And that the man of God and the children will die, and they die the same day. Why? Because he honored his children more than God. The purpose of God for Elisha was to be one of the greatest prophets, Gehazi was to be one of the greatest prophets in the whole world. Just as Elisha but what happens? Gehazi frustrated the purpose of God for his life. Why? Because of covetousness. The same thing happens to something. I've said it earlier. In what area are you trying to frustrate the plan of God for your life? My, my sisters and my sons and my daughters. In what area? Are you trying to frustrate the plan of God for your life? Thank God for this on the school this morning. Anyone that joins no court or anything, my brother, my sister, you are already frustrating the plan of God for you. That's not the plan of God for your life. That's not the plan of God for your life. The plan of God, the purpose of God for your life is that you will be great in life. Why do you want to frustrate that plan? Through your action. Why do you want to destroy or frustrate that plan through your activities that you are doing? My brothers and my sisters, for you not to frustrate the plan of God, the purpose of God for your life, 
you must do one two one or two things. Number one, you must surrender your life to Christ. He is the only one that can bring to pass his purpose for your life. He is the only one. And without surrendering to him completely, forget about it. Forget about it. Number two, you must live holy. Absolutely pure life. If you are going to, the purpose of God will be fulfilled in your life. God will never, never compromise that. Number three, you must be ready to pray without ceasing. And let me end by this story we all know. God created Manasseh and Ephraim. We have heard that story before. Genesis chapter 48. And when Jacob was about to die, the father brought there the two of them. Manasseh was the elder. And Ephraim the young, younger. And he put Manasseh on the right, right hand and Ephraim on the left. Because the man couldn't see. And when he brought them, he crossed his hand. And put the right hand on Ephraim the younger. And the left hand on Manasseh. And prayed for them. And there and then he told them that Ephraim the younger will be ten times more than his senior brother. And suddenly, immediately he heard that, that entered into his head. And he started misbehaving. Ephraim started misbehaving. Because God so much blessed him that he was ten, hundred times, ten times better than his brother. And that entered into his head. And started misbehaving, misbehaving. And the Almighty God called him, Ephraim, I, I am the one that exalted you above your senior brother. He said, don't worry, Father, you have blessed me, you have blessed me forever. Ha. God said, is that so? Come, let us reason together. It is not like that. Ephraim said, no, Daddy, you are on your own. I have already collected the blessing. There is nothing you can do. And God said, is that so? Do you know that I am the one that helped a man to fulfill my purpose in his life? Hey, don't worry. It's done, it's done. And the God replaced. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 17, God said, Ephraim, has decided to join himself with idol. He said what? He said, leave him alone. I changed my mind concerning him. And when it goes to Hosea chapter 5, verse 9, the Almighty God said, I'm not just leaving him alone. He said, Ephraim shall be what? Desolate. And that was why Ephraim was removed from the ten tribe of Israel. And Manasseh was brought back. And Manasseh was placed even higher than Joseph in that lineage. Go and read that lineage. He was placed in place of Dan that was removed. I am praying for somebody here. <laughs> that cool purpose of God for your life. You will not do anything to frustrate it in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Let me end on this note because we are taught we are here to address the students this morning. There is an evil that is going on here. Going on here now. And what is that evil? Some ladies are posting news for money. I have taken express permission from the camp. Anyone caught is automatic expulsion. No SIDP. That's what they told me. No SIDP. Note it. Write it down. The moment you are caught or your pit nude feature is sent to us, I don't, they said, I should not refer that person to SIDP. It's, we will give you a letter to go because your parents will send you away. Straight. Why do you want to destroy the name of Adeboye? No, why? This Baba has built his name for years, for 80 years. And some irresponsible boys or girls will be in this university and they will be writing Adeboye's daughter in news. Wow. This is, I'm just providing this information for you. Express permission. The moment you are called, your telephone, 
you discover your new feature there. If you have it now, go and delete everything fast. What, I, what am I saying? Fast. If you are caught and they search your phone and they discover your new picture or somebody has sent your new picture to us, oh, I pity your parents. How on earth can you be in this university and be doing such atrocity here? How on earth? What money are you looking for? By the grace of God, in December, this university was run the best private university in Nigeria. By the grace of God, in December, this university was run the second best university in Nigeria. Just two weeks ago, ADS Scientific ran this university as the best private university from outside. Why do you want to destroy that name? Why? Do you know what it takes to build an integrity all over the world? I am providing that information and tell everybody no SIDP for this. It's automatic expulsion. Automatic what? Expulsion. Rest up on our feet. I want all eyes closed. Brethren, you are here this morning. All eyes closed. You are here this morning. You have not surrendered your life to Christ. Or you are here this morning. Please. You are doing something in your closet that is not bringing glory to God. You are doing something that is not bringing glory to God. I want you to put your hand on your chest and call upon the name of the Lord and say, Father, have mercy on me. Please have mercy on me, O Lord. 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 Oh, Lord, I need your mercy. I need your mercy. I need your mercy. I need your mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, ready to call upon you and say, Father, the devil will not win the battle over my life. Tell the Almighty God, Oh, Father, the devil will not win the battle over my soul, over my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray. The devil will not win the battle over my life. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Finally, you are going to cry out to the Almighty God. I said, Father, by your own power, work out your divine purpose for my life. Work it out yourself, O oh Lord. Work it out yourself, O oh Lord. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Father, work out your own divine purpose for my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I pray for you this morning. That in the name that is above every other name, everything that is working to frustrate the purpose of God for your life, the Almighty God, we terminate it in the name of Jesus. The Almighty God Himself will work out His own purpose for your life mysteriously in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil will not win the battle over your soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's stretch our hands towards our Vice Chancellor. Let's ask that the Lord will bless him and water him afresh. He has watered us. Let's ask that the Lord will water him back in the name of Jesus. That the assignment God has given to him, God will help him with good success over this assignment. 
And as he cares for other people's children, God will do the same for him and his family in the name of Jesus. As as the Lord will reveal himself more and more to him, so that whenever he has time and is sharing the mind of God, it will be effective. The power of God will back it up. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As we have spoken in God's ear, so shall it do for us in Jesus' name. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's put our hands together for him. Thank you very much, sir. The Bible says in God's presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. And so when we come there, we are happy, we are glad. Why? Because that's the purpose of God for our lives. That's why we are at that service. And I pray that as many